everybody, this is Joe Robinson, and in this video I'm going to share with you some information about how I set the pickup on my signature model making guitar and how I use this guitar in conjunction with the Udo Rosner DeCapo 75, the finest acoustic guitar amplifier on the market in my opinion. So let's talk about the guitar to begin with. The guitar is made in Australia, just like me. Making guitars have been in business since 1946, which is just as long as Fender, which is a pretty amazing fact. This guitar has some Australian tone woods, which I think is uh, a big part of the sound. The back and sides of this guitar are made from Tasmanian Myrtle, which is a beautiful sounding tone wood with a lot of personality, punch, and a really fast response, which I like. It suits the way I play. The neck is made from mahogany. The fingerboard is rosewood, and the top is spruce. So. It's a smaller bodied guitar, but it's it's quite deep. And it has a really nice focused mid-range, which is one of the things I love about this size of, of guitar. Make and call it the 808 body size. One of the cool features of this guitar is it has a custom fret wire that I've been using in all my acoustic guitars for over 10 years. It's a little wider than a Martin fret and a little taller than a Gibson fret and I feel it really improves the playability of the guitar. I was turned on to this fret wire by Nashville's master guitar luthier, Joe Glazer, and I'm really glad that he turned me on to it because it really has become a big part of me developing my style and my sound and my technique because the frets just feel so great. So if you have the chance to play one of these guitars in person, I highly recommend you do so. Check it out for yourself. So let's talk about this amplifier, the Udo Rosner DeCapo 75. Now when I'm playing a solo concert, I'm using my Maiden guitar and I'm using the DeCapo 75. I'm not really using any pedals that are engaged. I have a tuner on my board and I have a loop pedal that I use on the occasional song, but for the most part, it's straight from the guitar into the amp with a little reverb on the amp, that's it. And I try to have the sound engineer set the channel flat Maybe they'll duck a, a, a frequency or two, but pretty much flat and no compression or anything like that. So what you're hearing when you hear me in concert is this amp going into the PA. And the Maiden guitar pickup is, of course, a huge part of the sound, but the amplifier also helps with some coloration. It just sweetens the sound in a way, and it gives me a consistent sound on stage that... It just takes the monitors out of the equation. It just makes my guitar sound just the way I like it every single night on stage. And I really, really love this amplifier. Before I used the, the Capo 75, I used AER acoustic guitar amplifiers, and they were designed by Udo Rosner. So this amplifier is kind of like a continuation of the AER legacy, but it's Udo's own line of amplifiers. So this is what I believe to be the finest acoustic guitar amplifier that I've heard and I highly recommend you try one out for yourself if you get the chance. Now I set the EQ on the amp to be flat. Occasionally I'll roll back the bass knob just a fraction if I feel like there's a little bit of low end build up on stage, but generally flat is my starting place. For the channel gain I set it to one quarter and for the master gain I also set that to one quarter. For the reverb, I'll set it at a quarter, sometimes I'll move it up to a third. Occasionally, if I want a song that's really drenched in reverb, I'll just turn that reverb knob up to about 50%. As for placement of the amp, I usually place the amp to the left of me on stage, pointing backwards. So it kind of fills the stage with a lot of sound. If you've ever seen Tommy Emmanuel in concert, you'll probably notice that he does the same thing. Let's talk about the Maiden pickup. Now I meet a lot of people who ask me about my Maiden pickup settings, and some of them are surprised with the way I set it. This is quite similar to the way Tommy Emmanuel sets his guitars, so there's a few rig rundowns with Tommy that are worth watching to hear him talk about how he does it. But I'll set the, the piezo to 100%, the mic to 100%, the volume will be 100%, sometimes I'll dial it back if I need to, but 100% is kind of the, the go-to position. 
I don't like to be adjusting the volume or the settings on my guitar too much. If there's a song that needs to be that needs to have a different setting, I'll do that, but I certainly want to avoid it mid-song or anything. I want to be just playing, just focused on the music. The bass and treble sliders really affect the punch of the pickup. I set them both to about two-thirds as a starting position. Occasionally I'll turn the treble all the way to 100% if I feel like I want a little more top end, and if I want a little more low end, which very rarely happens, I'll turn the bass knob up to 100% as well. Maybe if I'm playing a song with a walking bass line and I really want that bass to sound prominent, I'll turn the bass up to 100%, but generally that gets to be a little bit boomy. So I, I set both the bass and treble sliders to two thirds. Now the mid-range control also affects the sound in a big, big way. I'll generally have the mid-range between one quarter and one third. So there's this sweet spot in there, and it depends on the venue, it depends on the room, it depends on the PA. I find that JBLs usually have a really nice punchy mid-range. Other PAs have a sweeter high end. It just depends on the system, it depends on the room, like I said. But a, a starting place is about a quarter. I generally like a little more mid-range than most people, so sometimes I'll bump it up to about a third. And if I happen to be on stage with someone where I'm playing a solo and there's maybe a rhythm guitar being played as well and I want my guitar to really cut through with a lot of mid-range, then I'll turn that mid-range knob all the way up to one half. Now when the mid-range is at 50%, that can be really nice for playing a solo on top of another instrument, but for a solo piece, if you're the only person playing, it generally sounds a little harsh. I'll demonstrate that for you now. If I turn up at a show and I'm working with a sound engineer that I've never worked with before, generally I'll ask them to start with the channel flat, with no compression, and they can add a little reverb out front, season to taste, I always say. Sometimes we'll need to duck the guitar about a, at about 100 hertz, 120 hertz, 150 hertz, something like that. If there's a little bit of build up in those frequencies, which happens in many venues, and generally I'll want the low end to be sent to the sub. So if they're going to high pass me at 50 hertz or 60 hertz, I'll usually try to ask them nicely to roll that high pass down to 20 or 30 hertz so I can get that punch through the subwoofer. There was a time I used to count the number of concerts I played, and when that count reached 2,000, I decided to stop counting. That was enough. And let me tell you, I've used a Maiden guitar at every single gig I've ever played. And so I know these instruments very well, and I feel very comfortable and very confident recommending them to any acoustic guitarist out there who wants to get onto a stage and have a big, punchy, clear, beautifully responsive sound. It especially makes me happy to see younger guitar players playing a Maiden because when I see a young musician with a Maiden, I know that they have the power to plug into a PA and get people's attention. If you were to take one of the other mainstream guitar brands and plug it into a PA, in my opinion and in my experience, you just don't get that same punch, you don't get that same response from the, the pickup. The pickup is designed for more of a kind of passive strumming style, not for getting people's attention. That's where the Maiden guitar really shines, in having a big, punchy, full range sound that's going to allow you to really get the attention of your audience. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Please subscribe to my channel if you're new here. And you can check the Maiden website to view the list of their dealers all over the world. And if you want to contact your nearest dealer and ask them if you can play one of these Maiden guitar JR signature models, then I recommend you do so. 
and the, the Capo 75. Try one of those out if you can. They're really, really a great amplifier. I wish you all the best. Thanks very much for watching. Take it easy. Happy trails.